The legend of Bigfoot has haunted the wilderness for centuries. Reports of impossible sightings, strange tracks, and chilling howls have filled the forests with whispers. Now, the mystery takes a dramatic turn. New photos have emerged, offering unprecedented detail, images that could transform this creature from folklore into undeniable reality. Prepare to confront the evidence that could prove Bigfoot is more than just a myth. Strange sounds. A Bigfoot sighting became a federal investigation when a man fired his weapon inside a national park in Kentucky. Brad Ginn told news outlets he and his girlfriend were camping nearby and were awakened at about 1 a.m. by a man with his son. We got out of the tent and saw a man who told us their campsite had been destroyed by someone or something. The man, who was with his young son, showed them his weapon on his hip and told him the area was popular for Bigfoot sightings. The couple climb back into their tent as the man walked away to investigate with his son in tow. We heard them coming back about 10 minutes later. We heard them yelling, I see it. Brad said. We saw a flash from his weapon, and he shot maybe 20 yards from the side of our tent into the pitch black darkness. After this, Brad and his girlfriend decided to leave and report the incident, which was the smart thing to do. A park spokeswoman, Molly Schwar, said there was an investigation and that the park was safe to visit. The statement did not confirm a Bigfoot sighting, but Molly said that no threat remains in the park. Federal regulations prohibit the discharge of a firearm in the national park, and park officials know the identity of the person who allegedly fired the weapon, but no charges had been filed. Number 9. Thrown Logs In 2015, a pair of Bigfoot hunters were hot on the trail of a Bigfoot outside Houston, Texas. While following the beast, they realized the creature was unhappy with their presence. As they began their overnight hunt, the lead investigator realized that something was throwing full-sized logs at them from the tree line. That's according to Wes Germer, host of the Sasquatch Chronicle podcast whose team ventured into the East Texas Piney Woods. In the early night, the noise came. We heard this thing crash through the bush, and then we heard this thing start crashing, just crash, 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 and you can hear it walking, and you can hear it breaking branches as it's going. Then the giant bolted off and plowed fiercely through the dense brush with astonishing speed. This thing moved so fast, it probably covered 100, 150 yards like nothing. As we neared the spot where we heard the beast lurk, a noise grew and I knew what it was. It was a log coming and it was a big log and you could hear it being thrown. And I ducked down because I thought for sure it was going to hit us, but it hit the tree right in front of us and I just couldn't believe what was happening. Wes says it was a warning and that it wasn't the only time Sasquatch has thrown logs at unwelcomed intruders. Number 8 New footprint. In March 2022, in Big Sur, California, a hiker spotted a very large footprint. They took a picture of it next to their own foot for perspective and shared it on Reddit's Bigfoot page, where commenters discussed if they felt the print belonged to a Sasquatch or if it was nothing. And there were plenty of believers. One person wrote, This is the first imprint I have seen that isn't clearly a bear. Good find. While another stated, I wish the print was more fresh, but it really does look more like a Bigfoot track, and a third chimed in, what a solid print. Someone else added, definitely Sasquatch. The upper foot impressions is relative to the lower width and diameter of depth. I'd reach out to the Loco Bresto Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization in your area ASAP. Now it honestly does look huge, and to me, you can even see the toe prints. Seems pretty convincing to me. <laughs> Number 7. Bigfoot Eats Hogs East Texas is the home to many reported sightings of Bigfoot, including one particular encounter from a hunter in Panola County. The witness claims that while he was hog hunting, he watched a Sasquatch leap out of the woods and grabbed one of the hogs. The report states that the Bigfoot began making a loud whooping noises, which were met with more howls from somewhere off in the distance. Before walking back into the woods, the creature stared directly at the hunter and growled. Seemed like the hunter got a little too close to Bigfoot territory. Now those whooping sounds would definitely creep me out, especially if there were more coming from the forest. Ugh. Number 6. The Footprint In Logan, Utah, Matthew Wentz came across a large footprint he thinks could have been made by a Sasquatch in the Bear River Range. He didn't see the creature, only found the print, but he took a photo of it. Matthew, who is 6 foot 3, explained that a mountain lion track is not much bigger than his palm, the black bear track 
dyspraxia, seeing they're not any bigger than his hand, so that eliminates some comments of people saying it was possibly from a bear. He said, I wear size 12 shoe, and in comparison to that, there is no bear that would make a print that big. I've looked up bear tracks, and even the largest grizzly bear, this track is bigger. That track is in the 15 to 16 inch range, which is pretty big. If you take a shoe size, it would be bigger than a size 20. The width was 6 to 7 inches. I really believe there is some tall being out there, but I have no idea what it is. It's hard to believe they would be around here because there are so many people and more going into the mountains these days compared to 30 or 40 years ago. People used to see stuff all the time. He also said, I have multiple friends that are older than me that have seen stuff around here. They're credible, but they don't talk about it. You know, when someone has seen something and it scares them, they don't really want to talk about it or be ridiculed. Number five, hitchhiking. To this day, there are still sightings in Florida, and in 2021, as a commuter was driving down US 1, they were driving south just after sunset, and there was one on the road beside him and another truck. While driving, he noticed something very large walking on the west side of US 1, walking north, approaching him. His best description of what he saw was a huge football player in shoulder padding, six to seven feet tall, wearing a long, shaggy fur coat. This happened in the summertime in Florida, so no human would dare wear one, it would be too hot. He said, I slowed down as I became level with what I saw, and it had the head of an ape with a bump on its head. The fur was long and looked white, kind of like a dirty white shag carpet. As he drove past, the beast did not turn to look at him, but kept looking straight ahead. It was out in the open, and he thinks the other truck saw it too due to their driving actions, but that is just insane. Number four, the professor. Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum is a professor of autonomy and anthropology. He teaches at Idaho State University and his lab houses over 300 footprint casts from a mysterious North American primate. He said, historical evidence for the existence of Bigfoot takes the form of Native American accounts of a wild man in the woods. Depictions are remarkably similar across tribes considering the differing regional circumstances and interpretations. As European settlers pressed westward into the wilderness, they too reported encounters with wild men, buggers, giant hairy apes, mountain devils, etc. As a student of human bipedalism, our adaptions for walking on two feet, the best contemporary evidence are footprints that corroborate these stories of wild men. Something is leaving oversized human-like footprints. They are either hoaxed, misidentified, or the trace of a real species. The distinctive anatomy, documented consistently over the past 70 years, is compelling evidence of the latter. Number three, indigenous cultures. Many of the indigenous cultures across North America can contact include tales of mysterious hair covered creatures living in forests and legends that existed long before contemporary reports of Bigfoot. On the Tool River Indian Reservation in Central California, they believe in a group of Bigfoot called the Family. They called the largest of them hairy men and they are estimated to be between 500 and 1000 years old. Other tribes tell stories about Saskets, a shape shifting creature that protects the forest. The name Sasquatch is the anglized version of Saskets, roughly translating to hairy man. Other tales from different tribes describe them as a nocturnal race and children were warned against seeing the name so the monsters would not come and carry them off in the night. In 1847, natives talked about skookums, a race of human eating wild men living on the peak of Mount St. Helens in southern Washington state. Also related to this area was an alleged incident in 1924 in which a violent encounter between a group of gold prospectors and a group of ape men occurred. These allegations were reported in July 16, 1924. This has become a popular piece of Bigfoot lore with the area now being referred to as Ape Canyon. Number 2. The Reddit Bigfoot Hunter One Reddit user posted on the Ask Me Anything subreddit. They claim to have had countless interactions with Bigfoot and have done a lot of research. They list important things being number one, the most common misconception about Bigfoot is that there's only one of them. I and a vast majority of Bigfoot enthusiasts believe there exists self-perpetuating species of the bipedal ape residing in North America. Cousin species are likely the abominable snowman, yeti, and yowie among others. Number two, as recently as 300,000 years ago, there exists skeletal evidence of a species of a massive ape called Gigantopithecus black <laughs> Gigantopithecus. A massive ape called Gigantopithecus Blackie. Many Bigfoot enthusiasts believe these are ancestors of modern Bigfeet. 
Number three, there is an average of 400 reported sightings each year. Based on these reports, Bigfeet can be characterized as follows. Walk upright, up to eight feet tall, covered in black, brown, red fur all over their bodies, except for the face, palms, and soles, secrete a foul smell, nocturnal behavior, omnivorous diet, marked intelligence and senses of smell, vision, and hearing, extremely cautious behavior around humans. The most numerous examples of physical evidence are footprint casings. The Stride length heel to heel between prints is usually four to five feet, and the depth of the prints denotes the specimen weighing 600 to 700 pounds. Number one. The President Believed US President Theodore Roosevelt, in his 1893 book, The Wilderness Hunter, writes a story he was told by an elderly mountain man named Bowman, in which a foul-smelling, bipedal creature ransacked his beaver trapping camp, stalked him, and later became hostile when it fatally broke his companion's neck in the wilderness near the Idaho-Montana border. Roosevelt notes that Bowman appeared fearful while telling the story, but attributed the trapper's folkloric German ancestry to have potentially influenced him, but it seems like he believed him. A president believing in something like this? That's unheard of. It has to be true then. Number 10. Joking about Bigfoot In February of this year, a woman and her husband heard strange sounds for two nights and laughed about how they sounded like the Bigfoot sounds on television shows. That was their first mistake. Then on the third night at dusk, they looked into the woods that bordered their property in Heflin, Alabama, and this is what happened. We saw what looked like Bigfoot. Bigfoot peeking around a tree at us. We watched it for approximately five minutes as it appeared to look at us from the left and the right of the tree trunk. I dismissed it as being a distortion with the trees and wind. I turned to go into the house and looked back and distinctly saw what could have been only Bigfoot running away. I yelled for my husband and he also saw it running away. There was no mistaking what we saw. Both the husband and wife said the figure must have stood approximately eight feet tall and its fur was very dark. Was Bigfoot spying on them? Who knows? Number 9. Side of a Mountain In December 2022, TikTok user Sasquatch Project, who claims to be connecting the cryptid community, posted a video of what appears to be Bigfoot. The text on the video reads, Real Giant Caught on Video in Mexico. The video shows what appears to be some sort of mountain or cave. There is a hole in the side of it and there is a large man looking out. He seems to be staring at the person recording and then backs up and goes back into the rocks. Many people in the comments made jokes, but a lot of them think Think it's real. One user commented, what's going to be the government's excuse for this one? The video and the zoom is on point. Others are commenting that it's like the film The Hills Have Eyes, that it's a giant or Bigfoot, but who knows? Number 8. Bigfoot Hiking In 2001, a youth group was camping in the Marble Mountain Wilderness, California, when their leader, Jim Mills, noted a strange looking creature sulking along a ridge nearby. He believed it was Bigfoot and filmed it for nearly 7 minutes, making the somewhat great Rainy footage, the longest video of an alleged Bigfoot sighting. The video shows Bigfoot walking down a hill. The creature is huge, it's dark in color, and is walking on two feet, but has somewhat of a strange stride. It's definitely not human, and no animal could appear like that, so the obvious answer is. It's Bigfoot. But everyone in the video is shockingly calm though, which is crazy to me. Number 7. The Footprint In 1980, locals in Johnstown, Pennsylvania were baffled by a footprint they found. They first discovered the massive print in the mud and it belonged to somebody or something's right foot. Additionally, it had six toes rather than five, and the second imprint of the left foot was found eight feet away from the right print. It was so big and they measured it, finding it was 17 17.75 inches long. Now, this didn't spook too many people though, because according to the Associated Press, the footprint coincided with reports of strange noises and a strong but unusual odor in the area. Again, I love how everyone was just so chill about this. Number 6. Face to Face One of the three Midland County Bigfoot encounters documented details of a witness discovering an ape-like creature on the first day of hunting season in 1997. The witness claimed 
claims to have seen the legendary creature on November 15th, 1997, while driving in a wooded area near Coleman on Coleman Road, about six miles north of M20. They said, I was driving north around 645 and saw a creature coming out of the ditch. The report describes the creature as having a flat, ape like face and hair on its arms and head. The witness claims to have come within 10 feet of the creature when it looked at the witness. As the witness got closer to the beast, it made eye contact with him before disappearing into the trees, and that is terrifying. Number five. Bigfoot likes children. This user tells a story of seeing Bigfoot as a child. They said, I've had two separate sightings here in central Alabama, once when I was about five and another when I was 19. The first one, I was at my Nana's house playing outside in a treehouse my dad and pa built for me and I looked off into the woods and saw a large light brown bipedal creature standing there watching me. So I ran inside to get my Nana and when we came back out to the treehouse, it was gone. The second time, me and my wife were coming back from a buddy's house real late at night and I saw something large cross on two legs in front of a yellow road sign up ahead. These signs were about 10 feet tall and this thing covered the whole sign when I walked in front of it. Now, many people believe that Bigfoot likes children. While many don't think they actually eat children, they think they might try to kidnap them to keep as pets. As they like to watch kids for the same reason people like to watch kittens or puppies playing and there's a similar urge to take one home with them. Number 4. Falling Bigfoot Bigfoot has been reportedly spotted in Colorado more than a hundred times in recent years, including one notable daylight spotting that occurred in Summit County, Colorado. In the summer of 2019, a daytime hiker was taking a break near an old log cabin in the area of Mayflower Gulch near Frisco when he spotted something strange at about 11,000 feet of elevation. He reported seeing a large bipedal creature attempting and failing to climb a 20 foot high snow wall. After the failed attempt at scaling the barrier, the creature moved on and out of sight. The hiker was joined by two others and they searched the area. During this search, the group was able to locate prints in the snow, including large handprints and footprints. That being said, they were unable to again locate the actual creature. The report prompted Bigfoot Field Research Organization investigator Scott Miles to further look into the report. Scott decided to meet up with the witness at the site of the spotting. At the scene, the witness was able to recount the sighting in a manner consistent with the initial report, pointing out exactly landmarks involved in his story. After deeper analysis of the witness's account, Scott said, I believe that the witness saw exactly what he reported and was witness to a Sasquatch, probably a young individual that accidentally or naively got caught in a compromising situation in the daytime in a fairly high traffic area. Number three. In the swamp. In 2015, two men canoeing in Tampa, Florida swamp were expecting to see an alligator when they heard rustling on the bank. They soon realized that the creature they were watching was no alligator. One of the men said, Initially, it was exciting. It was like, Oh, is that a bear? That's pretty cool. But when we moved closer, it started to look less and less like a bear. In that moment, I was looking at it and getting a little bit freaked out, especially once it started really moving. You could tell that he was slapping the water and it looked like maybe he was grabbing something. At the time, I was thinking, holy what the hell is this? By the time it walked off, my buddy was just like, let's go, let's go now. The friend moved one of the canoe paddles making a noise, which seemed to catch the attention of the hairy individual in the swamp. I don't know if it was a coincidence that it started moving because of the noise, but it seemed to know that we were there. He said his friend was so shaken by the experience that he won't talk about it. Number two his face. This user describes what they saw when they came face to face with Bigfoot. They saw the beast in early spring 1994 or 95 in Salt Fork State Park in Ohio, Hazak's Cave. I hope I said that right. <laughs> he said, the one I saw had black sclera, the white part of her eyes, and cheek pads like a male orangutan. It was not a man in a suit. It threw rocks at me as I hiked a path towards a small waterfall and I was a little confused but oblivious. The last rock was bigger and hit me in the calf and hurt. I spun around quickly towards the direction it came from yelling, that really hurt, thinking it was somebody messing with me, and saw a head from the eyes looking up over a fallen tree 
tree or ridge maybe 15 feet away. It looked like an orangutan wearing a ghillie suit. I looked in the eyes for maybe 5 seconds trying to comprehend what I was looking at. Golden brown eyes with black sclera and cheek pads like a male orangutan. It didn't look malicious really, had more of an okay, you got the point look. It casually turned its eyes away and ducked back behind the tree or ridge. Then I realized what I saw and got back to my car. All I could think was that, because of his cheek pads, he was the dominant male of the troop. They must have been at the water source that I was hiking towards and he was keeping me from getting closer. I was maybe 3 quarters of the way there, but the smaller rock started at about the halfway point and got gradually bigger until I caught on. I told my brother and best friend and they didn't believe me, so I dropped or suppressed it for 20 years. I didn't think of it again until I saw a Bigfoot toy and thought they got the face wrong. And coming in at number 1 is the traffic cam sighting. A Washington Department of Transportation traffic camera near Sherman Pass captured Bigfoot standing in the snow in January 2020. At least one person at the Washington State Department of Transportation seems to think they saw Bigfoot after tweeting out some puzzling images captured by one of the department's webcams. Sasquatch spotted, the department east twitter account tweeted, along with three circled and zoomed in photos. I'm not superstitious, just a little stitious. The employee points out that there appears to be something in the bottom left part of the frame. It looks like a person shaped figure silhouetted against an evergreen tree. Might be Sasquatch, we will leave that up to you, the tweet said. The tweet also says that the photos were captured on State Road 20 Sherman Pass, a route that winds its way through the forested Cascade Mountains in the northeastern part of the state. The spot is about 70 kilometers south of the Canada US border in Grand Forks, BC. Honestly, I think it could be Bigfoot. It looks convincing. Coming in at number 10, we have Cthulhu. Let's kick off the list with a classic. We have a big old sea monster in the waters walking around. If there has ever been a cryptid that I don't want to be real, it's Cthulhu. Apparently, you go crazy just from looking at him. That's not an ideal situation for me. That sounds like something pulled right out of Bird Box or Bird Box stole from Cthulhu. Either way, who cares? Here's some footage of him. Let's see if you go crazy. Yeah, with the wings and all just hiding in the storm. Maybe he just showed up to stretch his legs for a little bit. Maybe he didn't wake up from his eternal slumber, but instead he just wanted to shift his position so he could sleep more comfortably. Or maybe the end of the world will come when this squid god shows us his face and controls all of our minds through a powerful telekinetic link and all life on the planet is destroyed. That's also an option. Coming in at number 9, we have Bigfoot. This big guy has been caught on camera probably more than any other cryptid. I really want someone to just find him. I really want want him to finally be caught so we can finally put this all to rest. But there's another part of me who wants to start dressing up as Bigfoot and pranking people so people go out searching for him and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to find him. Let's cut into a very interesting clip of Bigfoot. Apparently hair samples were found at the site where the Sasquatch was digging around, so it could have been a real Bigfoot or it's just grainy footage of a bear. Coming in at number 8 we have a lightning orb. I have no idea what this is. I definitely know that this thing is not of this planet. I feel like I'm very familiar with a lot of the things on this planet. We got bears, we got birds, we got a whole bunch of cool stuff, but we don't have anything like this. What on earth is that? It looks like it materialized out of thin air and then fired a lightning bolt. From just checking out the video, I would say it almost looked like a cell, like it had a nucleus at the center of it and there was a membrane on the outside housing some sort of energy. Or maybe it was a spaceship that had a force field around it and what we saw was either lightning deflecting off the outside of the ship or the ship shooting an energy blast. No matter what it was, I have never seen that before. Coming in at number 7, we have Lanky Boy. I have no idea what this next dude is, so I just named him Lanky Boy. I'm kind of getting rake vibes from this dude. If you guys are familiar with the creepy pasta, the rake, it's kind of like a tall, pale creature that is like animal like and kind of hunts stuff. In our next clip, you are going to see what looks like to be a rake like creature stalking its prey.
you can see it lingering behind the moose. Now, is this footage real? I don't know. The camera quality is so grainy, it's hard to make it out. And I think it's a little strange that the moose doesn't run with what looks to be a predator right behind it. Or maybe part of what makes this cryptid so mysterious is its ability to close in on its prey without anyone noticing. Or maybe this cryptid is harmless and had no interest in eating the moose, but was just hanging out as the moose was chowing down. Number six, Bigfoot crossing the road. This story is from a man in Canada. He said, I was going moose hunting and my friend was driving and we had been on the road about nine to 10 hours going to Ignis, Ontario, and we were on the Trans-Canada Highway. This area has the bush cut back some 30 to 40 years on each side of the road when I noticed an animal coming out of the north side of a ditch area and run across a two lane highway. This animal ran across the road on two legs and was about 20 yards away. By the time it crossed the road, my friend turned to me and said, what the hell was that? I said, don't you know that was a Sasquatch slash a Bigfoot. It was about six to seven feet tall. It had very long and muscular arms that went down to its knees. It was covered in fur that reminded me of moose hair. It looked like it was as tall or a little bit taller than the cab of the truck. It only took about five or six steps across the two lane highway and down to the ditch we were passing. I think it's a female because of breasts that were in the lower chest area, heavy legs and buttocks, about 300 to 400 pounds. It had less hair on the chest area and a partially covered homewood face that I could see muscle definition on the arms and shoulders. Number five, tracks in BC. This story comes from a group of people from British Columbia in December 2022. We were returning home last night and two members in our vehicle said, look, is that a bear? The person in the front seat saw what looked like a huge man standing on two legs. It bent over and fell to four legs. The person in the back saw the animal on the four legs. They both said it was not a bear. We live nearby, so when we got home, all four of us decided to go back and look for tracks. We went and filmed and took photos of a whole bunch of massive tracks that looked like they were from a biped animal. The tracks were bipedal in pattern and in a fairly straight line, except at points where they were side by side, as if the creature was stopping and standing still. We have also been walking in the woods near our house, and one time I saw a structure slash setup of trees that looked deliberately placed in different crisscross arrangements. I also heard deep resonant sounds one night. It sounded part human, part animal. The Ohio howl matched exactly what she heard right outside her cabin, only a few hundred feet from where the sighting was. Number four family witness. In 1996, this family saw Bigfoot. This user says, my two daughters and I were driving into Yakima from our home in Natchez. The road runs along the Natchez River and I look down at the river, as I always do, to see deer or bald eagles. But this time, I saw a large dark figure at the edge of the water behind some bushes. Slamming on my brakes and backing up far enough to see the river again, the large figure was gone and nowhere to be seen. Of course, my kid said, sure mom. Mom. Bigfoot? I don't think so. About two weeks later, I was driving on the same road coming home, and about half a mile from where I thought I had seen the other one, there were two standing side by side just looking down at the water. One was about a foot and a half taller than the other, both dark in color with very wide shoulders. Then about a week later, my husband was coming home. When he got home, he asked me where I thought I had seen the two Bigfoot. I told him and he said that he had just seen something like I saw in the same area. He's a real skeptic, so for him to say he saw something, he must have. I look every day, and so far I have not seen my friends down by the water, but I won't give up looking. Number three, Creature Week sighting. I was a vendor at Creature Week at Salt Fork State Park on May 4th in 2013. At 9.45 p.m., a fisherman that was in a tournament came all shook up and said, at first I thought you were a bunch of nuts until now. He said he saw Bigfoot. This caught our attention, and the five of us decided to go out the next morning at 6 a.m to check out the site. So I got there at 5 a.m. and waited, so I said I'll start without them and maybe they'll catch up with me. I started to head down the sagebrush trail and headed to where the fishermen saw them. I kept walking and when I hit the first turn of the sagebrush trail, I heard something like talking on the ridge on my left. At first I thought it was friend A and friend B with friend A's black shirts on. So I hit a tree and yelled, hey guys, wait up. Then they started to walk faster and I yelled, very funny guys, and this is when I got a great look at them. It 
it was two Bigfoots and they were black and huge. I tried to catch up with them, but once they got to the bottom of the ridge, they took off into the brush. I tried to follow them, but once they got into the brush, I could not hear or see them. But I got a great look at them. They were black as coal and the hair length was as long as a bear and well groomed. At any time, they could have stopped and tore me in half, but all they wanted to do was get away as fast as possible. Number two, Bigfoot on a highway. This family has seen Bigfoot and the wife retold the story saying, in October 1997, I was returning home from work on the US Highway 241 just outside Gladstone, Michigan. I got off work at five, picked up my kids, and my son was in the front seat with me and my daughters were in the back. We had just left Gladstone city limits on a four lane highway when I noticed what I thought was a hunter crouched down on the opposite side of the median of the highway. As I approached, I said to my son, look at that stupid hunter, why is he just sitting there? But as we got closer to the man, or now I say creature, stood up. It was brown colored and it crossed the highway with a couple of steps as it was on the other side of the highway within seconds. As I passed, it put its arms down to its side and stepped into the woods and it was gone. I have seen bears, deer, wolves, coyotes, almost every living creature here. My mind raced after I saw this looking for the logical answer of what this could be and the only thing it could have been was a Bigfoot. Then two days later after I saw the creature, it was reported on the local radio station that a Bigfoot was spotted on the same highway. And coming up at number one is the cottage Bigfoot. This dad saw Bigfoot when his family was away at their cottage. He said, we had been at the cottage for a few days when my sons and I heard a series of grunts, chirps, and squeals. It was fairly obvious that the sounds were coming from two areas about 15 degrees apart. There was also the noise of wood breaking and banging that was quite loud. We stepped out onto the deck to listen better. It was fairly obvious that one noise was getting closer to the other. The noises were really loud and it sounded like mayhem was breaking loose, trees being smacked and banging noises, shouts and whoops. Then it went quiet really quickly which was followed by a series of deep whooping noises and clicks which went on intermittently past the point I went to sleep. The next day I saw this big black brown thing sitting on a boulder about 20 feet above the water. I thought at first it was a bear but when a bear sits its legs just stick out in front slightly splayed. The thing had knees and it was sitting with its knees up near its chest. I was not sure of what I was seeing so I looked away and went back at it. I was not mistaken, it had knees and was covered in hair with no neck and then slapped its hands on the rock about three times, both hands at the same time. It looked kind of straggly and matted, it was huge on top like the chest area but it had scrawny by comparison legs, the hair on its legs were thinner and lighter. Then the thing just stood up and walked into the brush behind it. Seems like Bigfoot was just trying to enjoy the view of the lake to me. We're starting off the list with this video captured in 2017 in British Columbia, Canada. This is a video but uh, it's the sound that really matters here. So it was early in the morning, 8.30 a.m. on December 16th in Whitsett, British Columbia. And this dude started filming the tree line when he heard an absolutely nightmarish sound echoing through the trees, far off in the distance. Take a listen to this. How frightening is that? Now sure, there are a lot of animals in British Columbia. Uh, one commenter said this sounds like it could be a mountain lion call. Not sure about that myself. I've never spent uh, time in British Columbia to be fair, but I've watched videos of mountain lion vocalizations and this doesn't sound like that to me. But what do you guys think? To me, this sounds like a banshee. Could also be an elk. Elk make some pretty creepy noises. Uh, take a listen to that, like that's pretty cool, right? Sounds like one of the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. Anyway, whether the creature in this video was Bigfoot, a ghost, or just a known animal, it's a freaky sound any way you slice it, and I would not want to hear that walking through the woods alone. All right, this next story is pretty nuts. It was posted to Reddit by Donna Hotter Than a Sauna, and she talks about a run-in she and her boyfriend had with a gator. Actually, two gators. Uh, anyway, it goes like this. My boyfriend and I were walking through the woods on a nature trail when we came across a piece of alligator tail and foot that had been ripped and the rest of the body was gone. I freaked out. All I kept thinking was, I have no idea what's big enough to kill and eat an entire alligator, but I don't want to meet it. We cautiously kept walking and a few hundred feet later saw a giant 
probably 10 foot at least, alligator walking along the shoreline with a whole smaller dead alligator in its mouth. You know what's extra terrifying about that story? So they came across a huge alligator, right, that was hungry enough to eat one of its own kind. If they'd been on that walk just a little earlier, may have found them instead. Freaky stuff. Next up, we have the incredibly odd case of the Oakville Blobs. So the Oakville Blobs case was a very bizarre incident that happened in Oakville, Washington in 1994. And I cannot believe I've never heard of this case until today. Like, where have I been? What have I been doing with my life? So this is basically the real life version of the blob. These gelatinous uh, like globs started falling from the sky. And the even scarier part is that they weren't just harmless goo. The blobs actually started making people sick. They experienced symptoms like nausea, dizziness, and respiratory issues. And when scientists looked at the blobs under a microscope, they found something even more strange. There were human white blood cells in them. Cells from our immune system were in these gooey raindrops. Like, what? What is this? How have I not heard of this before? Uh, and if you're hoping for some kind of closure to this story, uh, that's too bad, because they've never been definitively identified. All right, I got some cool Bigfoot footage for you next. This list is going to be a bit all over the place, uh, but you know, hey, the world's forests are just full of surprises. So this piece of footage was taken by Todd Standing, who's captured some pretty intriguing Bigfoot uh, footage over the years, but this may be his most convincing. Here he saw an ape-like creature peeking out from a tree root, and he was able to focus in and get some pretty clear footage of its face. Take a look. Just look at the skin, the blinking eyes, like the subtle movements. It looks like a real face to me. Now, could it be a guy painted up with some fake fur attached to his head? Maybe. I mean, this could totally very well be a well-executed hoax. But there's also a chance it could be a real animal, too. Next up, we head to the Hestalen Valley in Norway to discuss unidentified lights periodically spotted in the sky since the 1930s. The Hestalen lights are this mysterious glowing phenomena that show up in the Hestalen Valley. Sometimes they're seen during the day, sometimes at night. They can be white, yellow, or red, and have been seen above and below the horizon. They can last for just a few seconds or go on for more than an hour. Sometimes they zip around really fast, other times they sway back and forth, and occasionally they just hang in the air. The lights became especially frequent between 1981 and 84, happening up to 20 times a week. People started traveling to the area hoping to see them, but by 2010 the sightings had decreased to about 10 to 20 per year. In 1998 though, the Hasdalen Automatic Measurement Station, or the Hasdalen AMS, was set up in the valley. It was designed to keep track of and record the mysterious lights when they showed up. Until this day though, they're still not 100% sure what causes them. Coming at number six, we have the Douglas Shire Lizard Man. You know, sometimes a cryptid is caught on camera, and I think, well, they deserve that. If you want to be a mysterious creature that is only talked about in legend, then you shouldn't be out in the open, because people are going to take pictures of you. But this lizard dude, I think he just wanted to be left alone. He's all tucked away in his cave when some explorers caught him on camera. See what I'm talking about? That guy had no interest in being on camera. He was just all tucked away in his little hole. But he was very smart and he didn't move so the people filming didn't notice him. This footage was taken in the Douglas Shire Cave in Australia. Coming in at number five, we have the gas plant alien. I can't imagine a scarier scenario. Picture this, you're working on an overnight shift somewhere. You hear something strange and you look up. At first, it seems like a blur, but as your eyes adjust, you see something that almost looks human, but for sure is from another world. You quickly move towards it and then the thing darts away never to be seen again. That's exactly what happened here. This picture was taken in Kennedy, Texas by a dude who was working alone one night at a gas plant. He saw this creature out of the corner of his eye and then he tried to get closer to it to get a better look but then the thing took off. He was shook by this encounter and this inspired him to call the police to have them come investigate this. The police notified him that there were over 30 people who had called the police that night to report a UFO sighting. Coming in at number four, we have a sea monster. There is so little we know about the ocean, so it should be no surprise that some strange thing washed up out of a beach from somewhere. At first glance, no one has any idea what this is.
Look at that thing. It looks like a squid crossed between a tarp and a mud monster. The worst part is, right at the start of the clip, the dude is touching it with his bare hand. Don't touch that thing, dude. You have no idea what you're dealing with. That thing could have acid blood or just be playing possum waiting for you to get comfortable before it eats you alive. Coming at number three, we have the floating man. Cryptids aren't always strange looking creatures that don't match the biology of anything we have ever seen before. Sometimes they just look like humans but are doing something very strange. This footage was recorded in Mexico and it shows something that looks like a man hovering several hundred feet above the ground. Now, there have been plenty of theories as to what could be going on here. Some people think that it could just be an optical illusion, that it looks like a man floating in the air, but it's actually just a reflection off of something. That doesn't really sound like a good explanation, but everyone is entitled to their opinion. Then other people say that this could be a balloon that's filled with helium, and it just looks like a dude, and it floated way above the ground, and it's shaped like a person. The only strange thing about that is it's not moving anywhere. The wind isn't blowing it, and it isn't gaining any altitude. It looks like some sort of creature that found a way to hover above the ground without any use of wings or propulsion system, or it's just a regular dude who got its hands on some Stark tech. Coming in at number two, we have a werewolf. Who knows really what this next thing is? Maybe it was faked. Maybe this is just a prop from a movie that someone took out into the woods to prank some people. Maybe do a little photo shoot to get a few views, or maybe it's just a regular wolf, but take a look at this. That looks kind of convincing, like the way the skin color is changed and the fur is patchy. Also, the snout of the creature is much shorter than an actual wolf. So what do you at home think? Did we find the world's first werewolf? Or is the internet punking us once again? And for the number one spot, we have Irish Loch Ness. And to close it out, we have a lake monster. This video was taken in Ireland, and I don't know if they use CGI to make it happen, but it looks pretty convincing. Like, look at it, it's just swimming next to the boats, and I don't know how those people just watch and can be so chill. I think I would like pass out from hyperventilating or something, or try to jump into the water so it could take me to its underwater world where everyone's super chill and they have kombucha on tap. All right, everyone, that has been our list. That's all we have for you today, and now I'm going to answer some of the weirdest questions I've gotten over Instagram. Remember, if you want me to read and answer your questions, you can hit me up on the gram. Anime lover 259 wrote in and asked, what's your favorite anime? I should have expected this question from this person. I do have a favorite anime, and I think it would be My Hero Academia. I mean, I love Dragon Ball Z, and I love Dragon Ball Super, but My Hero Academia just like pulls on my heartstrings and legitimately makes me care about each one of the characters. In season three, when Deku was fighting that muscle dude in the woods, I almost cried. MC Coops wrote, what's your favorite guilty pleasure, food or entertainment? I think if we're talking about food, I would go with mac and cheese. I know it's bad for me and slowly killing me, but putting dairy on carbs is always a home run. And if if it's entertainment, I love trash reality TV and catchy pop songs. And finally, Pop Rockside wrote in and asked, what's your favorite pet from Pet Shoutout? And I will give him to you. It's Tyson. He, I think, I think he's a mastiff, but he's just got this like tired dad energy and I love him. I want to cuddle that dog for eternity. Actually, me and my roommates were considering blowing up that picture and framing it, but it's kind of low res, so we didn't think it would work out. If Tyson's owner sees this, send me a high res picture of your dog so we can get it framed in our living room. We would love that. Coming in at number 10, we have the Marble Mountain Bigfoot. This is one of the most famous Bigfoot videos of all time. It was taken when a team of Bigfoot hunters went in search for the mysterious beast, and they might have got what they were looking for. Let's have a look at this clip. See the patch of snow in the middle there? There's three patches of snow up there. Uh -huh. see, see the one right up, straight up above the patch of snow. Right under that big wall. I mean, shaky camera footage and Bigfoot go together like peanut butter and jelly. You know there's even a rumor that Bigfoot has the ability to distort cameras, and that's why no one has been able to get a good shot of him. But looking at this footage, it's very hard to tell what we are looking at. That could be a guy walking around on his own enjoying the wilderness, but at the same time, he is so far out in the bush. It would be very strange for someone to be that deep into the woods without any supplies because it's very clear in this video that they have no sort of backpack or survival bag and no survivalist would leave their supplies just lying around while they're scoping out the area. Maybe this was a Sasquatch just hanging out on his own. 
Coming in at number nine, we have the Sasquatch Genome Project. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Sasquatch Genome Project, but it's a group of dudes who want nothing more than to find Bigfoot and study him. And honestly, they all look like cool dudes. They were on the news in Texas, and all of them have like mullets and ponytails. I bet beyond tips on how to find Sasquatch, they can also give you great tips on what products to use in your hair. But all jokes aside, these guys probably have the best footage of Bigfoot ever. Here's some of the clips that were able to work their way onto the local news. Use clip two. Seen short video clips of the legendary and very shy creature. The group spent five years and $500,000 coming to this conclusion. One clip is of... I mean, those all look pretty convincing. We just need to find a way to get a clear shot of this guy. Also, it's great to know that there's a group of people out there that you can join right now that can help you in your efforts to find Bigfoot. When I was a little kid and people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, a Bigfoot hunter was never an option. Coming in at number eight, we have Sasquatch in Virginia. Take me home country roads is what this big old Sasquatch was thinking when he came out and was spotted by these two dudes. This next clip was from a news station in Virginia. The footage was taken by a father and son on a camping trip. Honestly, that is the most wholesome way you could ever run into Bigfoot. You and your dad are like, look, it's a Bigfoot. I can't believe we're seeing this together right now, but let's get out of here before this thing kills us. All right. and this was shot apparently near the intracoastal waterway earlier this month. I don't see why these guys would lie about something like this but they did say that the same thing happened to them 25 years ago. Which makes me think that either these guys are the two luckiest dudes in the world or they're faking it. Seeing Bigfoot twice in one lifetime is like getting hit by lightning 23 times. Coming in at number seven, we have He's Still Around. If any of you had thought that Sasquatch had moved on to bigger and better things, or that if he was real, he had probably gone extinct by now, well, I'll let you know that this picture was posted in January of 2020. This was posted on Twitter by the Washington State Department of Transportation. It was picked up by one of their roadside cameras, and if you look closely, you can see something right next to that tree that looks like a man walking in the snow. Now, the argument for this one has been that this is just a guy going for a hike. Now, it could be that, but I don't know a lot of people that would walk through the snow next to the highway. I mean, that's a good way to get lost and freeze to death. Next up, we have the discovery of the Saula. Now, this one may not have terrified scientists, as much as get them super excited, but any time a cryptid is found to actually exist, it's pretty incredible. Uh, this creature, native to the Andamite Mountains in Vietnam and Laos, has a couple nicknames, the Asian Unicorn and the Vu Quang Ox. It is an incredibly rare animal, and for a long time, it was completely unknown to the outside world, a mythological creature at best. But in 1992, these animals were discovered to actually exist, at least to researchers outside side of the region anyway, and the first photograph of a Saula was taken in 1993. Did you notice that flap on the face that like flares out almost like the gill of a fish? Very strange. Uh, cool animals. Next up we have the whale in the jungle. And no, that's not some bizarre figure of speech. There really was a beached whale found in the Amazon jungle in 2019. This was an incredibly unexpected discovery made on Marajo Island at the mount of the Amazon River. A 36 foot humpback whale weighing 10 tons was discovered all the way up into the jungle. The whale was a 12 month old calf and was hidden in the undergrowth about 50 feet from the sea. So experts were pretty confused about how the whale made its way so deep into the jungle. One possible explanation is that rough seas might have tossed the creature out of the water and into the woods, but those must have been some pretty powerful waves. Darlene Silva from SEMA, the Brazilian Environmental Department, explained that the whale was found because scavenging birds were circling above the hidden carcass in the bush. Renita Emin, a marine specialist, was pretty surprised by the find as well, saying, we're still not sure how it landed here, but we're guessing that the creature was floating close to the shore and the tide, which has been pretty considerable over the past few days, picked it up and threw it inland into the mangrove. What's also strange about this though, is that the humpback whales are usually found in the Bahia area from August to November. So how did one end up on the north coast of Brazil in February? Whales usually migrate to Antarctica after their time in Bahia. So it just makes this find even more strange. Let's talk about more creepy noises though coming from the woods. Here's another. This video was posted to YouTube by Chris Simpkins, who heard this strange metallic sound coming from the woods near his home one night. Take a listen to this.
Yeah, that's a bit creepy, ain't it? The video was taken on September 6th, 2016, about 8 p.m. in North Smithfield, Rhode Island. In the video description, Chris dispels some theories people had about what the sound could have been, writing, There was almost no wind last night. We've lived here for a year and never heard this before. Even during the windiest of days, there aren't any trains nearby. And the background noise is just crickets slash frogs in my yard, and maybe me crying a bit behind the phone. Anyway, let us know in the comments uh, what you think of this one. Is it aliens? Is there some kind of power tool that can make a noise like that? Let us know what you think. Now, this next story may not sound like much to some of you, but I find this one pretty unsettling, and I wanted to throw it in. I think some of the scariest things we can come across uh, is, is the absence of anything. Complete silence and isolation. And Reddit user I don't care, I like dogs made a post about exactly that. They write, I live in a really remote part of Alaska. I think the scariest thing I've ever encountered is how silent the woods tundra can be in the dead of winter. I'm talking like I feel I'm about to go insane quiet. It's absolutely unnerving. I became hyper aware of my heartbeat and my breathing. It sounds like an effing airplane taking off. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's because a predator was nearby. No, man. Some places up here just have nothing. That's what really freaks me out. I am absolutely alone in this one spot. I could drop dead and no one would ever find my body. And yeah, I just find that kind of unsettling. And finally, we have the lost city of Z. Percy Harrison Fawcett was a British explorer who set out in 1925 to find the lost city he called Z in the Amazon rainforest. Fawcett believed this ancient city held all these untold riches and a sophisticated civilization. Accompanied by his son Jack and friend Rayleigh Rimmel, Fawcett ventured into uncharted territory never to be seen again. The expedition vanished without a trace and there were tons of rescue attempts, including one by famed aviator Charles Lindbergh, but no sign of Fawcett or his companions has ever been found. One theory is that Fawcett just died as a result of like all the harsh stuff out there in the jungle. Uh, could have been eaten by an animal or something. Definitely very likely, but there's a more interesting and, and more uh, intriguing theory that he and his crew may have actually found this lost city deep within the Amazon where they started a new life, living happily ever after down there. Over the years, there have been expeditions that set out to uncover the fate of Fawcett and the lost city of Z, but the Amazon is dense and dangerous, and to this day, the fate of Fawcett and the existence of this lost city still a mystery. Number 10, the logging company. In 1958, Jerry Crew, a logging company bulldozer operator in Humboldt County, California, discovered a set of large 16 inch human like footprints sunk deep within the mud in the Six Rivers National Forest. Upon informing his co workers, many claimed to have seen similar tracks on previous job sites, as well as telling of odd incidents such as an oil drum weighing 450 pounds having been moved without explanation. Soon began to utilize the term Bigfoot to describe the mysterious culprit. Jerry, who initially believed someone was playing a prank on them, once again observed more of these numerous massive footprints and contacted a reporter. A plaster cast was made of the footprints and Jerry appeared holding one of the casts on the front page of a newspaper on October 6, 1958. With multiple people experiencing the same thing, it makes me question how it could not not be real. Number 9 one of the earliest sightings in Florida. In 1975 in Florida, Collier County, a family found some Bigfoot footprints. A family went hunting out on a boys trip and the man retelling the story was 13 years old at the time. He said, my family drove out to a secluded area of the Everglades, way out in the middle of nowhere. We tracked through waist high vegetation growth and when we reached a clearing and continued in a horizontal line towards a tree line approximately 100 yards away. We supposedly were hunting for rabbits, but never saw one. As we approached the tree line, we came upon a recently dried out water hole. Here is where I spotted the tracks. They were at least 17 inches in length, two half prints and one full print in the mud going into the brush line. The brush on the other side was thrashed. I recall that we left the area not longer after it and it basically ended our trip. I feel like with what I know now, it was a skunk ape. I swear on the Bible on this experience. I clearly remember no sign of animal 
activity to include land or air. No birds. Weird for 7 p.m. aka dusk in the Everglades. Six of us saw it, but at the time none of us said anything. I remember it was 1975, only eight years after the Patterson film. Number eight, California State. In the United States, California is the state with the most reported Bigfoot sightings. So far, there have been 461 reported sightings. This is a real story from January 2022. A family was hiking in Humboldt County on a local trail in Redcrest. They hiked this trail for 19 years and do it three to four times a week, and they always go as a family. Their story goes, in the summer, we hiked the trail nearly every day. We've never ever gotten the creeps in those woods. The last two hikes have really changed that. We were nearly done. On our way out, when a loud, and I'm talking loud, yell, scream, guttural screech echoed through the woods. My family and I have grown up in redwoods. We've heard everything that nature has to offer in the way of animal sounds, but it wasn't a raven, a fox, a bear, a lion, a deer bleat, a chipmunk, or a hawk. It sounded somewhat like a human, but the fact that it traveled through the woods so clearly and loud really shook all of us. Today, the sound was nothing we've ever heard before. It was loud and defined. It was just far enough in the distance for whatever it was to get its point across without making us petrified. It stopped my mother, me, and my son in our tracks. There was no doubt that we all heard the same thing. We got the feeling that we were being watched, and that feeling didn't go away until we started driving off. Number seven, Bigfoot body. Two men, Matt Witten and Rick Dyer, claimed to have stumbled across a Bigfoot corpse in the woods northern of Georgia, and they stood by their story at a news conference in Palo Alto, during which they offered an email from an entomologist as evidence and said they have kept the body in a freezer for more than a month. Everyone who was talked down to us is going to eat their words, said Matt, an officer on medical leave from the Clayton County Police Department. Matt and Rick, a former corrections officer, announced the discovery on YouTube and their website. Although they didn't consider themselves devoted Bigfoot trackers before then, they have since started offering weekend search expeditions in Georgia for $499. The specimen they bagged, the men say, was one of several ape-like creatures they spotted cavorting the woods. Was it real or just a cash grab? Who knows, but finding the body of Bigfoot? Wow. <laughs> Coming in at number six, we have Finding Bigfoot. This encounter got a ton of press. A guy in Michigan had a series of cameras set up on his massive property, and he picked up something very strange. The clip I'm gonna show you is when the news covered it. Back then, we couldn't show it. Now, we can. A dark, hulking image amongst the trees that appeared in one frame and- And the popularity of this picture didn't stop. There, it brought in people from the Animal Planet show Finding Bigfoot. They came down to investigate. They claimed that because of the location of the property, there could be a whole family of Bigfoot living out there. And when the Finding Bigfoot crew went through, they were unable to find hard evidence as to whether or not there was actually a Bigfoot on this man's property. But I feel like that's what Bigfoot is best at. He pops in for a few seconds, he makes you think that you're gonna find him, and then you come up empty handed. Coming in at number five, we have the Provo Canyon encounter. Okay, I will admit it, this one freaked me out a little bit. I don't know where I stand on Bigfoot. Like, maybe he's real. There's a time when people thought pandas were a myth, and the people who had said that they had seen one were laughed out of town. So we could have the same thing happening with Bigfoot. But whether you're a believer or not, this video might leave you with a few questions. Yeah, we probably should stay close to it, huh? Cool. Like that did look pretty legit. We don't get a 100% clear shot, so maybe it was the real thing. The only thing I don't understand is why these guys are running towards it. Like sure, you want to make the discovery of a lifetime. You want to change the world and reveal that you found the missing link. But at the same time, you don't want to end up beaten to a bloody pulp by a mythical beast. Coming in at number four, we have the Paul Freeman footage. This is some of the most famous Bigfoot footage among Bigfoot truthers. Now I gotta let you guys know that this clip is pulled from 1994, so this video is not gonna be in 4K. The whole video is about seven minutes long and it's Paul Freeman scaling out some Bigfoot tracks, showing how long their strides are and how big the footprints are. And then he sees this walking through the bush. Use clip eight. Oh, there you go. Now this is just a peek at what Freeman saw that day. He goes on to follow those Sasquatch for about three minutes, and later you can see that there are two smaller Sasquatches along with the larger one. It's thought that this is a mother with her two little ones. 
Now it is kind of convenient that he was mapping out Bigfoot tracks and then runs into a Bigfoot, but people in the Bigfoot community say that this video is legit. Coming at number three, we have Bigfoot in Russia. Man, Bigfoot is getting around to more countries than me, and this dude doesn't even have a passport. This footage was taken by a few kids that were walking around the frozen wilderness in Russia. They came across something that looked like giant footprints. It looked like someone was walking through and they sloshed around in the snow to make all their tracks look bigger. The kids were very curious, so they followed them and guess what they found? Well, you don't have to guess, I'm going to show you. Use clip five. And darts away. After they see the beast, they turn tail and run. And as I said in a previous point, that is the smart thing to do. And when they got home, they showed their parents. The clip became so popular that National Geographic went to go investigate. Coming in at number two, we have the Algony camera trap. When people talk about Bigfoot, I always think, why don't they just set up a camera trap so they can get pictures of the big lug and then that'll be that. Well, it turns out that someone has actually done this. It was a photographer by the name of Rick Jacobs. He went up to the Algony National Forest, which is quite a trek north of Pittsburgh, and he set up some cameras to get some amazing nature footage. Well, he got something natural as well as something mythical. That photo, along with several others, were sent to the Denver Post to publish as proof of Bigfoot. The bummer is that we don't get to see his face. But I do have to say that this creature, whatever it is, doesn't look like a bear or something I've seen walking around in the woods. Its hair is too short. It definitely looks more like a primate. And coming in for the number one spot, we have Surprise. I really could title any of these Surprise. I don't think anyone has ever seen a Bigfoot and was like, oh, that's a regular creature that I've seen so many times before. I'm not shocked at all. But this guy in this next clip was just out hunting. He owns a big property in Mississippi, and while he was out looking for boar, he ran into this. The deeper and deeper I get into this, the more I become a believer. Now in the description of this video, the person who posted it calls whatever this is a skunk ape, which is basically a Southern Bigfoot. And this might be it. This has to be the most convincing video I have ever seen. If you enjoyed this video about Bigfoot, then check out part one of this series. We have even more evidence of this elusive creature, and it's only a matter of time before we capture him for real. Click the video now to find out more details.